Hello and welcome to another weekly meta review where I go over the best of one, the best decks in best of one, best of three, and sometimes a budget deck. And this week we have three tournament winners to cover because there were two standard, or yeah, three standard challenges over the weekend. So uh, <laughs> we've got a lot of best of three and then a couple of best of one decks at the end. So uh, to start things off here, we've got Tamir Control by King Harry which took down first place uh, for the Standard Challenge 32 on April 6th. And if we compare this one to week eight, we can see a couple of changes. So they've decided to drop the two copies of Kellen. It's more accurate to say that the one in week eight was running two copies of Kellen. And because the other lists I've all seen have not been running that. Uh, so this one's not deciding to go down that path. However, they are running one copy of the Shigeki Jukai Visionary, which that list was not running which is nice for being able to return your World Souls Rage to your hand after it's been countered, um, as well as just um, bringing back lands and such to your hand. Uh, this, one, this, this list decided to take World Souls Rage down to three copies instead of four, which I thought was interesting. I, I honestly, I don't like that change too much because I like to use the World Souls Rage to ramp instead of just strictly as a win condition. So a lot of times I like to have two in, in a game. Um, this deck does thin very well, though, so it's probably functional with just three. Um, and then this uh, we're running one copy of the Splendid Re Reclamation, which some lists have, some lists don't. So this list is deciding to run one of, which is kind of like um, having a fifth Aftermath Analyst. And is running one copy of Spelunking, right? Oh, no. Yes. So some lists are running Spelunking, some lists aren't. This one's deciding to bring in the one copy. Uh, spelunking is nice because then when your land sacrifice, they fetch a land and that land comes into play untapped instead of tapped. And so it, it, you get additional, it makes your Nissa Resurgent Animus particularly good because then you get one land, two land, three land instead of just two for each time that you're triggering something off of like Analyst or the Splendid Reclamation. And then uh, this one is running the Echoing Deeps, which has a little bit of synergy with the Spelunking, but then also allows you to uh, tap for er, colors that are in your graveyard, which is pretty likely that you, this is just going to be a rainbow fixing land um, that can potentially gain you some life off of Spelunking. And then we've ditched the one copy of Riveter's Out Overlook, which um, was one of these sacrifice lands. So it was just it was one of the five. Uh, they were deciding to run one copy of. So uh, as far as the best of three sideboard goes, we've seen some changes. So dropping a braid down to two instead of three copies, dropping the one copy of In the Festivities, as well as one copy of The Vampire's Vengeance. Some lists were running three. And then um, upping the Lithomanic Barrage to a total of three. So two copies there. And bringing in an additional copy of Titania, Voice of Gaia which is some really good life gain against the aggro decks. So this Friday, I'll be covering the Timur Control sideboard guide and its matchups. And Titania is really good to bring in against like Boros Convoke, where all of your land, land coming into play not only gains you life from here, but also gains you two life off of Titania, Voice of Gaia. And it's an elemental, which can be found off of Nissa's, Nissa Resurgent Animist. Second place was taken down by De uh, Demir Midrange by... Uh, Rasta F or Rastaf. And um, compared to week eight of Murders at Karlov Manor, we do see some changes to the main board. So Lasav, Wear of Faces, the one copy has been removed. Urtai Resurrected has been dropped down to one copy from two. Brought in an additional copy of Shieldred the Apocalypse, as well as two Dress in the main, and cutting one Make Disappear. As far as the best of three sideboard goes, we've seen that they brought in an additional copy of Blot Out and um, decided to cut the three copies of Glistening Deluge, as well as two copies of Spell Pierce, one Unlicensed Hearse, and one copy of Liliana the Veil. Vale. So we still have one copy, but there used to be two. And instead, we're deciding to bring in one copy of Negate and one copy of... Kaido Shizuki as a Planeswalker. Um, if I remember correctly off of the top of my head, this is particularly good in the matchups like the Mirror and Mono Red, 
But you can always go back and look at my sideboard guide that has each specific matchup and kind of my suggestion off of the tracker data about what to bring in for each matchup. And then uh, also three. So instead of the glistening deluge, which can be a one sided board wipe, we're going with the path of peril, which uh, is a little bit more equal just, you know, uh, board wipe hate and one copy of Gix's command. Third place was taken down by Domain by uh, Sam L or Sam One Go One. No, Sam L Go One. Samuel Go One. Probably massacring names here. Doing my best. So if we compare this one to week eight, uh, which was last week, we can see that this list has decided to drop the two copies of Spelunking as well as one copy of Depopulate. So just running one instead of two and is favoring doing three copies of Glimpse the Core for their ramp. And then they tweak the land to kind of reflect those changes. So we've dropped one mountain, brought in one plains to a total of four, and brought in one uh, Spara's headquarters at the cost of one proving ground. As far as the best of three sideboard goes, we've ditched both copies of the Elish Norn Mother of Machines, which is particularly good against Boros Convoke, and brought in a fourth copy of the Kutzil's Flanker, so really anticipating more of that teamwork control, and uh, took out the three copies of the Long Goodbye, which was some good spot removal, mostly for like Mono Red, um, and then brought in a, a fourth copy of Temporary Lockdown, so to really hate on the Boros Convoke, and took out the two copies of Stone Brain, which uh, is usually good against the teamwork control, but Four flankers and two tranquil frillbacks should probably do the trick. <laughs> and then um, the two tranquil frillbacks allow you to gain some life against mono red, allow you to exile your target player's graveyard against the teamer control or the landfall decks. Um, and then the artifact and enchantment hate can be useful against like the Urbrask's Forge in mono red, as well as some of the enchantments like Wedding Announcement and um, Virtue of Persistence, no, Virtue of Loyalty. Uh, yeah, Virtue of Persistence and Golgari. So like, th there's a couple of matchups where Tranquil Frillback works pretty well. So bringing the uh, two copies of those in. And then as well as two copies of the Chrome Host Sea Shark. And this works, this has nice synergies with the Leyline Binding. Because then you get a 6-6 six, six every time that you cast. Because uh, your Leyline Binding costs one to cast, but its casting cost is six. And so you get a 6-6 six, six Incubator Token. Has some nice synergies with the Chrome Host Sea Shark. And it gives you an alternative win condition. And for whatever reason, there were two um, standard challenge 32s on April 6th. So the other set here, uh, first place was won by Demir Midrange by Venom 1. And uh, so if we compare this one to week 8, we can see that they've decided to also drop the one copy of Lasav in, in favor of a fourth copy of Fairy Mastermind. And then everything else is the same. As far as the best of three sideboard goes, we do see some changes as well. So they've dropped the one copy of Aklazot's Deepest Betrayal, as well as the one copy of Blot Out, and the three copies of Glistening Deluge, and two Spell Pierce, and Unlicensed Hearse. And instead are running two copies of Duress, one Negate, two Kaido Shizuki's, Two Path of Perils for the board wipe instead of three, and one Gix's command. So sim some similarities, some differences between the other Demir list. Second place was taken down by Bant Poison by Arcane One, and this is we have not seen a top three placement for Bant Toxic. It kind of fell out of favor compared to Boros Convoke. It was kind of cool to see. And we can see that they've definitely gone for more of the creature heavy um, meta or the, the creature heavy strategy, bringing in the slaughter singers and the bloated contaminators. So they decided to not keep the jawbone duelist. But yeah, they brought in three copies of the slaughter singer and three copies of the annex century, which used to be in the sideboard, and two copies of the bloated contaminator to have more board presence, as well as some threats that uh, do not get answered by the temporary lockdown. And they've cut the three copies of Charge of the Mites, which if you go back and look at my sideboard guide for the Charge of the Mites, it was not performing particularly well. And instead, we've dropped our increased Fading Hope up to a total of four from three. 
Cut one, bring the ending from three to two. Brought in one copy of an additional copy of a darker waste and a ganjo. And cut out one Ottawara. So no copy of Ottawara. And so running 23 lands instead of 22. Because we have a little bit higher curve. As far as the sideboard goes, we've got um, one less Annex Sentry, so running one copy here, and that's because the other three are in the main. And one it re running no Lantern Flare, so Lantern Flare was being used as a removal to stabilize against Mono Red. Mono Red we haven't been bumping into as much. Uh, this list is still keeping the four knockout blows, but um, the Lantern Flare was probably overkill. And then we're also cutting the one copy of Myrix. So the list before was exploring bringing Myrix in, I think, to counter the Azorius control matchup. And, um, or, or to just bring in the 23rd land, depending on whether or not you're on the play or the draw. Because when you're on the draw, you need less lands. Uh, when you're on the play, you need more. So it might have been exploring that as well. Uh, but either way, cutting the one copy, copy of Myrix, and then bringing in three copies of Destroy Evil for a total of four. So um, if you go back and look at the sideboard guide, again, it goes over each matchup. The like Doorkeeper Thrall, for example, is really good against Boros Convoke. Destroy Evil is a common one to bring in, especially against Esper Midrange, because it hits Rafine as well as the enchantments, um, Wedding Announcement, and Virtue of Loyalty. And uh, we've got some negates for preventing board wipes, Sunfalls from Azorius Control and Domain, etc. Um, and then some Tokashi is welcome to kind of outvalue our other mid-range opponents. All right, so third place was taken down by Demir Control, which we've started to see pop up in the top three. So uh, third place was taken down, but second place in the Standard Challenge 64 on April 7th uh, by Gracias Portanto was also taken down by Demir Control. So we've seen we saw two top three finishes this weekend with this archetype, and they were the exact same list uh, with just the slightest difference. Uh, one was a 61 card list and the other one was a 60 card list. So this one is the list by uh, Bomber Boss, who won third place. And this one, we're bringing in a couple of more threats on the board compared to uh, last week. So we've brought in an additional copy of Chromo Sea Shark up to a total of two, as well as two copies of Akalazot's Deepest Betrayal. And uh, we're, we're testing out one copy of Essence Scatter and cutting out the two copies of Make Disappear and bringing in a, a second copy of the Siphon Insight and cutting out the two copies of Jace the Perfected Mind, again, for a total of 61 cards. As far as the best of three sideboard goes, we've moved the Akalazot's Deepest Betrayal out of the sideboard to the main. Same with one, um, one copy of the Chrome Host Seed Shark. We've cut the other one, so it used to be a total of three Chrome Host Seed Sharks in the list, now it's just two. And uh, we've dropped one Shieldred the Apocalypse and brought in an additional copy of the Tishana's Tidebinder for a total of three. This is particularly good against Planeswalkers and um, particularly good against the Boros Convoke strategy, as well as silencing is pretty is a pretty good response to the Teamer control deck. Because if they go to sacrifice their Aftermath Analyst, you can play Tishana's Tidebinder and then make it so that they just sacrifice their creature and they got nothing, which is pretty good. Pay for, do nothing, and sacrifice a creature. Yeah, pretty devastating. So uh, I imagine this was the kind of sideboard option for against the teamwork uh, control deck. Uh, we've, brought, we've moved the second copy of the Siphon Insight to the main as well from the sideboard, and uh, we have two copies of Jace the Perfected Mind in the sideboard so there used to be two in the main one in the sideboard so now we've just moved two of them to the sideboard you're going to bring this in specifically against other control matchups i imagine and then um we brought in one copy of the uh outrageous robbery which is kind of another mill condition i think imagine why we're not running the three copies of jace is that one of them is outrageous robbery that kind of works to mill out the opponent as well and then we've got two parasitic grasp and one Urtai Resurrected. I love that so much. All right, yeah, one copy of the Urtai Resurrected. All right, for now, for Sunday's tournament, Standard Challenge 64, first place was taken down by a familiar face. We've got Mono Red, piloted by Mogged. And uh, Mog Mog's a longtime Moto champion, you know, tournament winner. 
usually favors aggro. So happy to see them get a first place win with mono red. And um, if we have to go all the way back to week 12 of Lost Caverns of Ixalan for the last time, unless I messed up in my records, uh, the last time that I mentioned a best of three mono red list. So it's fallen out of favor a little bit, and I think people have started to sideboard more against the team or control, and so this allows us to be like, okay, not everyone's running four knockout blows or sunset revelries, and we can kind of get back in there, right? So uh, this list took out the two copies of Imbereth Veteran, which was the two one for one that was being explored at the end of Lost Caverns of Ixalan, brought out a one copy of Bloodthirsty Adversary, and cut the two copies of Felden Ronum Excavator, brought in three copies of the Fugitive Codebreaker, as well as a second copy of Squee, and three copies of Godric Cloaked Reveler. So the one in Lost Caverns of Ixalan actually cut Godric Cloaked Reveler, which was kind of a shocking move at the time, and, uh, brought, and brought in one copy of Thundering Raiju. So I have a singleton copy of Thundering Raiju is pretty common these days in... Uh, the best of three mono red meta, in my opinion, um, kind of just lines up nicely with the field. So, um, and then we're cutting the four copies of Urbrask's Forge from the main, putting them in the sideboard, and bringing in one mountain for a total of 23 lands to kind of uh, reflect the longer curve instead of all of the one drops. As far as the best of three sideboard guys, uh, guide goes, we've moved Squee from the sideboard to the main, so we're down one Squee there. Uh, we brought in a second copy of In the Festivities, or against Boros Convoke, um, ditched the two copies of Nahiri's Warcrafting, and as well as the two copies of Vampire's Vengeance, and also took out one mountain. There was a mountain that was being brought in again, play versus draw. And um, we're dropping Koth, Fire of Resistance, down from three copies to two, bringing in three Cemetery Gatekeepers, which I think is the board's answer to Timur Control. Whenever a player casts a land, <laughs> they deal two damage to themselves. So um, you can really punish them for doing the landfalls over and over. And then there's also three copies of Urbrask's Forge, which, again, if... I will eventually cover the best of three sideboard for mono red. It's going to get kicked back to another another week. So look for it on the um, Friday after <laughs> the release of um, Outlaws at Thunder Junction. All right, second place, like I mentioned, was uh, taken down by Demir Control by Gracias Portanto. This is the same exact list as Bomber Boss, except for they cut one island so that they actually had a 60 card list instead of 61. Uh, Esper Midrange took down third place by Mick Windsauce, and it's been a little bit since we saw Esper Midrange, so I have to go all the way back to week six of Murders at Karlov Manor. Uh, but if we compare that to, if we compare it to week six, we've seen that they brought in one copy of Lord Skitter Sewer King, which gives us some graveyard hate, as well as some go wide payoffs. Uh, dropped the three copies of Fairy Mastermind, so just not liking the matchup whatsoever in the the, the air battle between Esper midrange and Demir uh, midrange, right? Like trading your bats or not your fairy mastermind into like a spyglass siren doesn't feel particularly good. So I can get behind ditching the fairy mastermind. Also, it doesn't feel like there is, is as much draw to uh, as uh, your opponent doesn't draw its, their second card as much um, compared to where the meta was at months ago <laughs> at this point after my vacation. Um, okay, so they've also dropped the Akalzot's Deepest Betrayal. Some lists were running one copy of that, which was nice against the uh, aggro matchups, if I remember correctly. And then we've got one more copy of Wandering Emperor. So instead of two, we're, we're bumping it up to a total of three. Taking No More Lies, which used to be like a two of and then a three of, we're taking this one up all the way to a total of four and bringing in a Caves of Kolios, the fourth copy of Caves of Kolios, uh, a deserted beach, single copy, and one island. Kind of reflect, I think, a little bit more of the field of ruins and the demolition fields kind of requiring you to go grab basic lands from your hand. <coughs> and then um, we've dropped the Rafine's Tower and one swamp. So for a total of 27 uh, from 26. But for the best of three sideboard, we've 
kind of we've moved Aklazots from the main into the sideboard. So we've got one, uh, two copies of Aklazots Deepest Betrayal. And then we've ditched the two copies of Tishana's Tidebinder, which I thought was surprising because I thought like teamwork control was growing in popularity and is a pretty good option. Um, instead, we're bringing in uh, one additional copy of Disdainful Stroke, which works well against Domain as well as um, good against the Knight Errant of Eos in Boros Convoke. And then we're ditching one copy of Duress, so going from three copies down to two. Still a decent option against your control matchups. And then we're dropping two copies of Negate and bringing in Shrouded Shepherd as kind of a option to answer like the Voldarian Epicure and Gleeful Demolition and Resolute Reinforcements in Boros Convoke. And then bringing in two copies of Obscura Interceptor, which can kind of give you one more turn. So like if, uh, it also works well at bouncing things like Atraxa and Domain that have a Cavern of Souls that prevent you from counterspelling it. You can just bounce it to their hand. So Obs Obscure Interceptor can kind of uh, be a fun one to include to work around Cavern of Souls. All right, now time for the best of one breakdown. And uh, we've seen we're going to see some re repeats, so I decided to, to not include them. So if you want, you can go pull them up from the week that I'll mention. So first place is still mono red aggro and uh, is the same list as week eight in murders at Karlov Manor, according to untapped at with at least a thousand matches. Number two is Boros Convoke. And if we compare this one to the one that I covered last week, we do see some changes. And this is kind of an alternative list that's been floating around. Um, that leans more heavily into the case of the Gateway Express instead of the War Leader's Call. So it depends on what your, you know, what your matchups are, whether or not it's going to be favorable. They're so, like control. It sucks to have the case of the Gateway Express. You'd rather have the War Leader's Call, vice versa. It's better to have the case of the Gateway Express when you're up against a board-centric strategy. So it's a little matchup dependent on what you're hitting in the meta on your best of one ladder climb. But anyway, this one has ditched three copies of Lunark Veteran which uh, was pretty good against Mono Red, and, and ditched the one copy of Regal Bunnycorn. You bring in two copies of the Yoshin Frontliner, which is an, uh, the, the OG artifact for setting up Gleeful Demolition. So it gives you some more turn one hits. So you can hit the uh, Clue Token uh, Frontliner and the Blood Token off of Voldaren Epicure with your Gleeful Demolition. And then as far as, let's see here, uh, we're, we're ditching Sanguine Evangelist down to two copies from three. And bringing in a fourth copy of Imidane's Recruiter, which is pretty common. The other list was exploring running three, as well as a fourth copy of Knight Errant Eos, which again is very common. The other list was exploring three. And dropping one copy of War Leader's Call down to a total of two to bring in the four copies of the Case of the Gateway Express. Uh, we've dropped one copy of Cavern of Souls down from four and brought in a second copy of a Ganjo and dropped four planes bring in a second copy of Sokenzon and four Battlefield Forges, uh, notably, and, and down three copies of Sundown Pass. So notably, still no Thran Portal. So both both versions are not running the Thran Portal, and especially with the how common Mono Red is in Best of One, I can get behind that decision. And the last list here is Teamer Control, made it into the top eight for um, Best of One. So number three was Mono White Humans, same same list as I covered in week eight. Azorius Control was uh, number four and was the same list as week eight, as well as the one, the list that I ran for my 50 match summary, which should be available this Saturday. Um, Teamwork Control was number five. And if we compare this to the list that I covered in week eight for Teamwork Control, see that they also decided to ditch the two Kellens uh, run a third copy of uh, the Falaji Archaeologist to kind of help against Mono Red and the aggression there. And brought in two Shigekis instead of just one. Uh, I think that's really because of the prevalency of control. And then um, they've dropped one copy of the Vampire's Vengeance, which I was surprised. It's not a particularly good board wipe against the Boros Convoke because of Voldaren Epicure as well as um, Sanguine Evangelist. So kind of, I thought they were going to increase more because of usually coming up against an aggressive strategy in best of one. But um, definitely, definitely one that kind of caught me off guard that they decided to drop this down to one. 
They brought in uh, one copy of Doppelgang as an additional win condition so that you don't just get destroyed by the stone rain um, and give you kind of an alternative win condition. Yeah. And then um, Virtue of... Sorry. Virtue of Strength. Dr dropping Virtue of Strength down from four to three. And uh, bringing in the one copy of Echoing Depths that we've seen in lists that usually have Spelunking. And so this one does not have Spelunking, but is still including it. Um, dropped one forest, uh, brought in one mountain, and cut the Revit Revit Riveteer's Overlook. As far as, um, yeah, Celestian Enchantments was number six. Same list as week eight. Mono Blue Tempo, the budget list, uh, was number seven and is the same list as week three. And then Mono Black Aggro took down number eight, uh, or took eighth place, and was the same list as week six of Murders at Karlov Manor. So I hope that gives you a good idea of what the meta is up to. Um, thank you for watching to the end of the video. Remember to hit like and subscribe. We appreciate it. And thank you again to all of my YouTube members for, uh, for supporting my <laughs> my um, my my hobby here. So I really appreciate it. And um, if it you know check it out if it's something that you would like to do, it would be great. <laughs> I'm gonna be. Changing some things up as far as the rewards go for the membership down here, where I'm going to be posting some uh, documents for the sideboard guides and such, so that you guys don't have to keep referring to my YouTube videos. Uh, I'll be posting that for YouTube members. So um, I will be back again. I'm trying to do weekly or uh, almost near daily Magic the Gathering videos. So uh, look for the next one and. I, I'm not 100% sure that I will be doing the last bit of Murders at Carla Manor before Outlaws at Thunder Junction. This might be the last one before Outlaws. Um, it might take a break. But if not, I'll see you guys next week. Um, we've, I've moved things so that they're going to be available every Sunday instead of, or, sorry, every Monday instead of every Sunday. Because um, it was kind of weird to feel like I was a week behind. Um, when I was publishing it for members only. So I didn't, I wanted to just like get it out there every Monday. So uh, that will be what we'll be doing going on in the future. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a rambly ending there. I apologize. <laughs> Hope you all have a wonderful week and good luck crushing your matches. And maybe I'll see you on the ladder.